Okay, um, I'm holding the camera today, so right now, so, um, like I said earlier, uh, in my earlier post, I had put that the recipe I used uh, previously the other day was for the Catherine Fowler's uh, high foaming coconut oil and stearic acid soap. Well, cream soap. This one is, I and, and I went through and made up her, I made up my own soap recipe for cream soap so I took and I kind of had to tweak her recipe a little bit because it's kind of outdated her numbers don't actually add up to what actual SAP values are for um, KOH and NAOH uh, saponifications so what I did was through me and my husband kind of working things out a little bit I'm doing this soap without any um, uh, stearic acid in it. I want to see how it turns out. This is just simply, and yes, I did use palm oil in it, so it's because I used what I had on hand just so that I could see what the difference was. This is uh, coconut and palm oil and rice bran oil with castor oil. I got my vegetable glycerin in here with it, and I have, I'm just waiting for all the oils to melt down as you can see they need to uh, melt down a little bit still so I have all the soft oils in here I will post my recipe when I post the video and I will show you how it all works it's gonna be a couple of days because I'm gonna let this sit for a full 24 hours before I re-whip it or I whip it when it's cooled off and actu actually done cooking and everything because I want to see the consistency of it and I guess that's my biggest thing right now is checking to see if we can get a nice thick consistency without the use of stearic acid in it. Um, I will be, I wrote the the formula down that we came up with. It's in our post in our group uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, cut this right now and I'm probably going to go ahead and show the video uh, after I show a vi I'm going to, right now I'm going to let these melt down and then um, we'll be back to mix our dual lies and our water in with this. And then um, once that's done, we'll do go through the cooking process, the same as always, same as the video beforehand I did. And uh, I'm kind of anxious to see what this looks like. So bear with us, bear with me because I'm kind of going in this a little blind and going by my own formula. So we'll see how it works. And if it works, then I'll give the formula out and you guys can use it and kind of tweak it how you want to. And I'll show you how to rework them a little bit better. Um, but right now I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you what our other soap looked like from the other day. I will see you in a few minutes. Here's my lye solution and I'm going to add it to our melted oils now. out here so you can kind of see it a little bit better. So you can't see it all that much. There you go. Hope you guys can see it better. Alright, this is my oils, lye, and the water solution with vegetable glycerin and everything else in it. So, alright, it's going to get loud.
we knew this was going to take longer to actually get it to set up so our trace so because we don't have the stearic acid in here again this is coconut palm rice bran and castor oil with vegetable glycerin in it and um, our water and along with our dual lies test batch number one I guess you to see if you can see this is trying to break it's almost kind of like it's starting to rice but it's starting to thicken so I'm going to keep it in motion and as it's starting to thicken you can tell that it's it's gonna start it's gonna set up pretty soon but then again I've been wrong I 
and anytime you have a dual eye a sort of mixture if you've made liquid soap with the two different kinds of lies you always know that you know it's the, um, you're always going to have one of the lies <clears throat> and it's usually the sodium hydroxide that's going to try and bind quicker with the acid the stearic acid and the fatty acids within um, the oils faster than potassium hydroxide because potassium hydroxide takes a while to to uh, trace so we just want to keep this in, in motion for now I'm kind of letting my stick blender cool off a little bit because it's starting to get warm I have my crock pot set on high to melt the oils and I will set it, keep it set on high until this traces and it'll set up and then once it sets up I'll cook it on low for the next three hours. Kind of excited about this one. I'm excited to see what it's gonna turn in what it's gonna turn out to be now this recipe um, we figured out what our water amount should be I felt that it might be just a little bit too much so I discounted it and I reserved the remaining amount of water at the end for after it's done cooking and once it's relaxed because we might need to we might want to add water at that point when we whip it so that's kind of why I did that and until I know exactly whether it's going to take that full amount of that water, um, I won't. I'm not going to add it in right now. So. Because this called for 58 ounces of water and 6.8 ounces of uh, vegetable glycerin. The vegetable glycerin, I put the 6.8 ounces in and I pulled I only used 45 ounces of water for this recipe for right now and re the remaining 13 ounces I will leave for if we want to use it if we need to use it to depending on what kind of a cream soap we want it to be or whether it's going to be thick or thin I don't want it to be too thin so I'd rather be able to add it to it than you can't take it away once you've added it So, yeah, I guess I'm playing it safe. I use my spatula a lot when I make cream soaps and stuff like that. That kind of blocks it from so much air being trapped inside the soap. So when it does get hot, it doesn't puff up and doesn't overflow and volcano on you. Um, that way, always, I'm always trying to keep it in motion so that it does start to trace. So like now, burp it. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the, the mixer again.
blender is starting to get pretty hot in my hand. <clears throat> As you can see, it wants to break. It's still, it's curdling. And we want it to be that nice smooth consistency so that we don't have to worry about it breaking. And then you having an oil layer on top and the rest of the soap on the bottom. So you have to try and like spoon it in there. See how you can see the curdled effect. Trying to get a lot of the air bubbles out again. And it's starting to, see, now it's starting to smooth out. It's not curdling anymore. And this may get really, really hard on you, and it may not. I'm kind of waiting to see exactly how this is going to go. Because right now it looks like it's starting to get a uniform, creamier texture. And you can see it on the spoon now. You can see it on here now. And that's what we're kind of looking for. I just want to stir it a little bit more to make sure it's not going to break again on me or it's going, not going to curdle anymore. I know some people say they like to stick blend, stick blend, stick blend. I like to be careful with it because I know sometimes this stuff can get really, really it you get air trapped in it and then it starts to it reaches a temperature and then it all it's like it boils and then it boils out of the pot and all over the place i have ran to the sink holding this burning my hands and arms with 200 degree liquid soap before believe me it's not fun so i try and do it a little bit more patiently and carefully might sound odd but I kind of like the process it's kind of almost soothing I feel soap making is an art form therefore you have to take the time to appreciate the art and sometimes it takes just standing here and kind of stirring it around and watching it transform in front of your face Now it's starting, I can feel it starting to get nice and thick. And I wouldn't have been able to feel that necessarily with the stick blender. See? It's starting to thicken up a little bit. It's a beautiful thing, you just have to learn to appreciate it. And this is another reason why cream soaps do cost a lot more than regular soap, because it is a pro it is a, it's an art form. It's, it's its own unique experience. It's, it's something that not everybody does. If you don't want to put the time and energy into it, then the patience, or if you can't appreciate it for what it is, if you're just somebody that wants to hurry up and get something done and be done with it, and then it's out the door because you want to make money off of it. This is not the type of soap you want to make. This is a very fluid, technical, probably one of the oldest forms of soap making there is. And you have to have a passion for it. And when I mix my lye, my lye water, into my soaps, 
I what I do is I get my my oils up to temperature so that they're completely melted, and then I take my lye solution, my lye in water, and I mix it right away and I pour it, I don't let it cool down, I don't heat it up, I just, I mix it right away, and then I pour it. Make sure it's all uh, mixed into the water, and then I pour it into the oils. That way everything's gonna be right about the same temperature. The oils might be a little cooler, but as you can tell, if you have your crock pot, that's what it's there for. how thick that's gotten so far. So I'm gonna let this cook for a little bit and when we come back to check it and like this because it hasn't completely I'm gonna give it about 10 or 15 minutes and then I'm gonna come back and check it and I'll record it when I do because I'm sure it'll be a little bit different then. It'll be different looking. It'll be probably be more solid. So I will see you guys in a few. Okay, it's been about 10-15 minutes, and I have come back to uh, give it a stir, and it's still fluid, but at the same time it's still thick, and that's because it's on high heat. So I'm turning it down to warm, and I'm letting it gonna let it cook for the next three hours on warm, because the dual lies. Actually, I hate to say it, but they like they like the heat, but not it getting really hot so there is it's really hot right now so it's gonna cool down a little bit and it's gonna continue to cook for the next three hours because when it cools see how thick it gets So, I'm thinking we found our glitch in our formula, but we won't know exactly until the soap has had a chance to relax and completely cool to room temperature, which will be tomorrow. So, we're going to let this cook for the next, th you know, three hours. I'll be back in here to check on it and stuff like that. No really a whole lot of sense to bring you into it. I'll probably do it about halfway through, so about an hour and a half from now. I will uh, bring you guys into it once it's cooled and kind of gotten to where it's more of the consistency where it's supposed to be. So, until then, I will see you in an hour and a half. Okay. We're an hour and a half into the cook, so we're about halfway done. And this is what it looks like so far. Kind of chunky from the soap forming. It's on low heat right now. And for the next hour and a half I'm going to put it on to um, just the warm heat setting. Once it cools this forms pretty, looks like it's going to be pretty hard, but it's actually cooking to where it's starting to be neutral. You can tell by the color of it. So, see how it's get, starting to get more solid as it cools off. So, so this is it at an hour and a half into it. Like I said, there it is.
it's more like almost like a if you've ever made liquid soap it's more like a gel almost at this point like a really thick gel type paste which is how I'm used to it being so we'll see kind of excited about this one I know I keep saying that sorry if I sound redundant Okie doke. We're going to turn our heat down to warm and we're going to let it cook for the next hour and a half. And yeah, that gets kind of pasty. It doesn't. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see what it's like once it completely cools and see if it's whippable and how it's going to end up being after it's had a chance to relax. So. Alrighty guys, I'll see you in about an hour and a half to show you what it looks like right before we shut it off. And then tomorrow we'll give it a chance to completely relax and then we'll go ahead and whip it. Okay, I'm going to shut this off now and start the cooling down process for uh, tomorrow with it. And it's got, it's very solid. That's not water, that is soap. Where it's warmer on the bottom, it's still, you know, liquefied. But along where it's cooled off quite a bit, it's not, it's still pretty solid. So what's gonna happen is, this is going to uh, cool off and hopefully it's going to uh, become more, a lot more solid or at least stay this way so that uh, we can whip it tomorrow and we'll see where we're at from there. I'm kind of proud of the fact that this has kind of uh, worked so far. Not that I doubted, but at the same time I'm always nervous going in when I have to reformulate something completely and I formulate something because I'm always wondering did I just waste all of those materials which I'm sure everybody else here is thinking the same thing. So, if this if this does work, then we're off to something completely new and different in cream soap making, and we just kind of like crack this wide open with everybody. So, again, this has absolutely no stearic acid in it. It's coconut oil, palm oil, rice bran oil, castor oil, vegetable glycerin, and dual eyes. And we, it, and now we've gotten to the point to where we, we know exactly if we know how much, how much our crock pots can hold, or if we want to double it, because we'd obviously have enough room to, if we wanted to make, this would be a seven pound batch. If we wanted to add another three pounds to it, make an easy 10 pound batch, we can now break it down into ounces and then with our ratios and our percentages we can actually make our own cream soaps to fit our needs. So um, I think we're on a roll here guys and I think we're doing really good so uh, I will let you know because I will finish this up tomorrow once this is completely cooled to room temperature and we are down with this then um, I think we'll just have to kick start it and see what goes on. Okay? So, we're going to, like I said, this has got to rest and sit at room temperature for at least, you know, the next 24 hours or 12 hours, I would say. But I might give it 24 hours to let it completely relax a little bit just to see what happens with it. Make sure it doesn't get real liquid like the other one did. Um, and we'll see if we do need, say, the boric acid and water mixture to add into this to pull the stearic acid out of it to get that firmness. Or if we can just whip it and leave it at that. So let's see, because I know there's two different, there's a couple of different ways to make it. And if we're not going to use stearic acid, then we might have to use um, a boric acid and water solution to come up with to... Uh, mixed with this, like I said, to pull the stearic acid that's in the oils already and uh, firm it up a little bit for us. So, let's see. Let's play a game here. Game on. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. 
All right, this is the cream soap that I made yesterday that we re that I reformulated and everything with no stearic acid in it. So I don't know what this is going to be like. It's relaxed. It's uh, semi-solid. There's some liquid in it. We're going to see how it looks. Um, and if it doesn't whip up to be a real firm soap, I'm going to kind of tinker with it from there to see what we got. Um, it'll be a cream soap regardless. It's, it might be a real thin cream soap or it might be a thick one. Um, I'm actually looking into a few ways to pull the stearic acid out of the actual soap but um, we'll see how it works. So it's going to get noisy here for a few minutes because I'm going to put on, I'm going to use my mixer and uh, we'll see how it goes. So this is our soap test. No stearic acid soap and we're going to be, we're going to start whipping it. Looks like we did get a nice cream soap out of it. Um, 
Whether this completely flattens, I'm going to wait another 24 to 72 hours to see how this turns out. But it looks like, yes, you can make cream soap without stearic acid in it. This is, like I said, I'll, I'll put the formula up that I used for, um, for this batch. And it's a simple coconut, palm oil, rice bran oil, castor oil. Those are the oils I used. Um, and I reformulated it. Uh, this makes a seven pound batch. It's 112, 114 ounces. Um, I like a thicker cream soap and so far this seems to give almost like a, a I want to say like a smooth body butter feel or look to it I should say. Now I'm going to get one of the spoons here and I'm going to kind of see how it oh that's nice. That's a very very nice consistency so we got a beautiful lotion like cream soap out of this now we gotta see what the lab I want to see what the lather is like so I took that little scoop from the spoon and now I'm gonna go over here to my sink and we'll do the reason why I stopped with my my hand mixer is because it started smoking because I think I burnt it up from all the cream soap that I've been making. But um, I'm going to, I want to see what kind of a lather we get out of this. It's beautiful. It's like a nice creamy, smooth, very, very smooth. Lots, I want to say it's a, it feels like a lotion almost much much smoother than when I used it with when I used stearic acid. The stearic acid gave it a, a nice a, a foam but and and the lather isn't bad. I'll have to see what it's like when I use it. Yeah that's a nice creamy type of lather, lather but I'm not getting that how do I say it? It's like a grabbing feeling I think is what I'm think what I'm trying to explain with um the stearic acid, the stearic acid almost gave it like, um, like it was, it was, when you'd rinse, you could, when you took your fingers and pushed them together, it was like, uh, 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 because it was kind of like a grabbing feeling, so to speak. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I think if you work with stearic acid, you'd, you'll understand. This is very, very creamy and emollient. I really like this. It's almost like putting a lotion on your, on your hands. So I think we're on to something guys, um, if you need help formulating, I put our, I put the formula for making, creating your own cream soap recipes in our files. I, I copy and pasted it and put it into the file area, um, it's under the heading, form, uh, cream soap formulation, um, so that you can go in there, oh this is just, this is heaven, you have no idea. So, I know I'm sounding silly here, I just keep going back to the way this feels, I just cannot... You, 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 when you, you won't believe it. it it's like rubbing your hands with lotion right now. That's seriously what my hands feel like, like a nice, really, almost like a conditioner. This is just amazing. So, I am extremely tickled pink with this, and um, you will be seeing more and more recipes. I'm going to be formulating some different oils and some more recipes uh, without stearic acid, because so far, I am in love with this. Look at how creamy that is. Can you, can you see that? That's like, oh my gosh, that is, it's like heaven on your hands. All right, guys, uh, enough of me. And now that I've rinsed my hands, I don't have that tacky, uh, almost, like I said, that, that biting action. Not, not where it's harsh, but my hands feel very smooth, and they just feel clean. If you made bar soap, it feels how your, how your body and your hands feel after you've used like a really creamy bar soap. Um, you know, formulated one with some really creamy lather in it and stuff. Yes, that's exactly how your hands feel afterwards. So, this is uh, a winner. I am I'm extremely, extremely proud of this so far. So, and as you can tell, it's a very, it's not like super, super thick. 
but the cream soap in itself is nice and creamy looking. It looks like a lotion. So, um, I think we're on to something. I'm going to keep working on some more formulas for you guys, and I'll be posting more information. So if you need any help, let me know, and I can sit down and and figure some stuff out for you, and I will talk to you later. I'm super excited about this. Bye-bye.